I want to share with you not just connecting dots today. Okay. I want to show you actually what has been going on in the recent days in this past few months in the begin from the, you know, from the beginning of last year to now some of the things that have been going on. And it's not just a matter of connecting dots anymore. It is real. It's happening. Uh, so let me start off first by uh, just introducing to all of you my website, the Mahdi Institute. And what I hope that will come out of this is to create um, many, many Islamic projects. Number one, uh, to create Islamic scholars for the future. Number two, to create Islamic chivalry, Islamic fatua, Islamic, you know, Islamic soldiers of the future, you can say, right? Like the, you could say like, you know, how the the Western concept of chivalry, Islamic chivalry, the fatua, to come out of this, to have lessons on Islamic scholarship, to have lessons in Islamic fatua, and the Islamic, teaching the Islamic response to the current crisis that we are in. Now, let us uh, go directly into, uh, so there, if you go on online learning, you can sign up, you have to register, and you can sign up for the Arabic classes that I will be starting one month from now. Now, um, World Economic Forum, okay? Now, let me share with you something very important. Uh, this is the World Economic Forum, and I'll be talking about a lot of the things that are going on with the World Economic Forum. This happened in 21st, 24th of January, 2020. Stakeholders for Cohesive and Sustainable World. This is the vision, okay? Okay, it's World Economic Forum Annual Meeting in Davis, uh, Lusters, is the foremost creative force for engaging the world's top leaders. World's top leaders. Okay, bring them all together here in collaborate activities to shape the global, regional, and industry industry agendas at the beginning of each year. It will bring together what three thousand of the elite from around the world and aim to give concrete, like this is what we're going to do. And I'll share with you an example of that to stakeholder capitalism. Okay, assist governments, wait, assist governments, but the pandemic didn't happen yet. Okay, okay, but let's, let's continue. Assist governments and international institutions in tracking progress, tracking progress towards the Paris Agreement, which I'm not going to talk about today, and the Sustainable Development Goals. And facilitate discussions on technology. Technology will play a major role in the future. And trade governance. Okay. So now, let us, let us understand this. The fourth industrial revolution. What it means, right? This is the world economic. They are talking about a new global reset. And I'm going to share that with you just shortly. Okay. This, uh, oh, let me just, uh, mention over here. What they also did is they have this idea of what is transhuman? Okay, what is transhuman? Transhuman is the next evolution of human beings. Okay, so they are talking a lot about this. You'll see, this is about humans and technology coming together. And rather, I would dare say, it is humans and technology and magic and jinn and, and, and the demons coming together. Okay, transhuman is a way of thinking about the future that is based on the premise that human species in its current form does not represent the end of our development, but rather a comparatively early phase. Remember the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ about the jal, that one of his eyes will be like, it will be protruding like a grape. Okay? Protruding like a grape. Okay? So th this is like basically a thing of technology. Okay? And I will talk about that, inshallah, at another time. So, uh, Transhuman is loosely defined movement that has been developed gradually over the past decades. So this is where we're headed. We're headed towards the merger of technology and human beings, which eventually means that because we'll have this technology, right? Just like Google controls your phone, basically. It knows what your phone is uh, being used for. It's used for, you know, it, it integrates the, its control systems, it can track where your phone is. That means you as a human being will be tracked. This is where we're, we're going. This is where the vaccines come in. But don't take, you know, do, don't take that from me. Let's, let's continue inshallah and see, um, what is going on. The great reset. The great reset. This is the world economic form. Okay. 
there now if you look behind okay world economic form and you look at the pictures here let me just put myself to the side you see uh, you'll see a lot of these pictures have to do with technology, with the environment, technology, and, you know, having uh, all this technology, look at this robot technology and everything, right? That they want a reset. I'm not saying this. They're saying this. This is not connecting the dots. No, this is happening. This is there. There is an urgent need for global stakeholders to cooperate in simultaneously managing the direct consequences of COVID-19 crisis to improve the state of the world. The World Economic Forum is starting the Great Reset Initiative. This is the reset button. You know the reset button? We're going to start over. And we're going to come with a digital currency. And we're going to make human beings into transhuman beings. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to do all these things. Of course, uh, every new initiative, they, uh, the Dajjal has to deceive people with good words. So now, let us read what is said here about the Great Reset. The, what is the opportunity? The context over here, it says, is COVID-19. What is the opportunity? As we enter a unique window of opportunity. Meaning COVID-19 is a unique window of opportunity to shape the recovery. This initiative will offer insights to help inform all those determining the future state of global relations, the direction of national economies, the priorities of societies, the nature of business models, and the management of global commons. What is common, you know, amongst all the global world, drawing from the vision and the vast expertise of the leaders engaged across the the forums community the world health uh, the world economic forum the forums communities the great reset initiative has set has a set of dimensions to build a new social contract new social contract if anybody has studied Rousseau's idea of social contract, so this is a new social contract, a new contract, a new way of doing things, okay? Social contract that honors the dignity of every human being. Wow. You know, how great is that? Mashallah. Okay? So, they want to dignify every human being. Okay? Now, what are they saying? Okay, look at this picture. This is the symbol of the United Nations, and on that are moths, meaning it's dying, it's decayed, okay? And so now what are they saying? New world is disorder, meaning United Nations. World leadership is missing in action. 75 years ago, the world leaders designed the peace, uh, the peace even they fought the war. Even as they fought the war, meaning United Nations was formed as they were fighting wars, Today's leaders need to do something similar, okay? So they need a new world order. Event 2001. What was Event 2001? Event 2001 was a, an event at Johns Hopkins University. If anyone knows about Johns Hopkins University, is the foremost university when it comes to medicine and medicine security, biomedicine in the world, okay? But John Hopkins Center, and by the way, who has funded John Hopkins University the most? The Saudis, just so you know. John Hopkins Center for Health, Security, and Partnership with World Economic Forum and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation hosted Event 201, a high-level pandemic exercise in October 18, 2019. So 2019, they were doing these exercises. And, the, and just like all the world leaders coming together in, you know, uh, just like a checklist, okay, everyone's going to wear a mask, okay, everyone's going to say the same thing in the media, everyone's going to do social distancing, and then everyone's going to do this, and everyone's going to do this, and the whole world's doing exactly as being said from one country. It's not like China has its own policies, and America has its own policies, and, you know, uh, Pakistan and India and every single country has its own policies and how to handle this pandemic. No, the world uh, the, the, the world and, and the, the uh, global institutions are running the checklist and making sure every, this should tell you that how helpless leaders are in front of these international institutions. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is uh, John Hopkins talking about this uh, same thing. This is John Hopkins to protect people's health from pandemics and disasters and ensure that communities are resilient to major changes. All this happening before 
the pandemic. Okay. Uh, seven goals for the planet. So now this is the sustainable development agenda. Now, of course, they have to present everything in a lovely, lovely, lovely way in which you, you know, hand over your body uh, for technology and you are then you get a basic income and you let the robots do more work than human beings can ever do and the human beings will be replaced by technology and by robots and so on and so forth and so all of this is all ready to go okay this is what they're saying they're saying now uh, you'll see this uh, so seven goals for the planet okay so, so they are thinking in terms of where to take shaping the future of the fourth industrial revolution this is what they're calling it they're calling it the fourth industrial revolution okay uh now i'd like somebody to take a look at this picture world economic forum and what is this guy doing i don't understand but it's interesting and now what it says is the global elite re really is quite global the global elite is really quite global. Delegates at 2020 annual meeting of the World Economic Forum in Switzerland, in, including representatives from 117 countries and 121 nationalities. Okay, they came and they, you know, made these aims and they agreed upon it from world around. And this is the direction that they want to take the world. Uh, over here is a little bit more about event 200, 201, John Hopkins Center for Health Security in Partnership with World Economic Forum and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation hosted event 201, a high-level pandemic exercise in October 18, 2019 in New York. Okay, now, live simulation exercise to prepare public and private leaders for pandemic response. This happened when? Before the pandemic began. Okay, so... The game of life, visualizing China's social credit system. This is now the thing that is the, the really the, the cream on the cake. So you got the technology, you got our freedoms taken away, you got the world agreeing, we got to move in a certain direction. All that is happening, and then you will be monitored using something something similar to what China is doing. You know, I have a brother who I talked to from China, and he tells me like they do the health check. You know, you get like a a, a green, a yellow, a red depending upon if you're if you're doing social distancing if you're following the rules you know you got a green if you're not following the rules then you know who are you friends with are you going to the masjid are you going to are you praying in the masjid close to anybody else they're going to be able to track all this they're going to be able to see you know do you go to the bars you go to place to pray do, are you a person that is a, 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 you have a grudge against the system right you points taken away from you oh you pray with other people you don't keep your social distancing points taken away from you right but we'll give you an income We'll give you some salary and, you know, we'll try to create this neom type uh, world for you, right? So all of these things were already pre-planned, okay? For those people that know what I'm talking about, neom, okay? The game of life, visualizing China's social credit system. How good of a person are you? And I wonder where practicing Muslims will fall in this scale, especially considering that China is is kind of like the foundation of this social credit system and considering China's relationship with the Muslim community in its own place, right? And also considering that how China's great relationship with Israel is. And then, you know, they talk about this racism and radical injustice, you know, pride of the month. This is the, the gay lesbian thing, the COVID-19. We're going to save you from that. We're going to talk about women's rights. We're going to talk about gays and uh, gays and lesbians rights. You know, if you're not part of this, if you're not participating in the global community, if you are, then your social credit scores will be taken down. Okay. And, you know, uh, virtual ocean dialogues. The, this is, you know, state of the trade, mental health at work, beyond GDP. You know, if you're not happy with, you know, uh, following these rules, then, you know, maybe you need to see a psychologist. Maybe you need to sit with a therapist. That Why are you upset with uh, uh, everybody? Because, you know, 
the all the this the Muslims will feel isolated. And being isolated brings certain health problems, which they will maybe then identify and try to push you into these, you know, mental health situations. Okay, beyond GDP, right? And then uh, this is the place where the Switzerland, and then of course globalization, industri the fourth industrial revolution. This is globalization. You see those pictures of technology, globalization 4.0. Okay. So now uh, you have this, you know, this is very interesting too. Center for behavior and environment. That how we can control your behavior in regards to environment. Not only that, then you also have how we can, uh, this is all about controlling behavior, okay? How we can control you, okay? World Economic Forum is an international organization of public and private corporations. And it's what small pack pox can teach us about how we've managed COVID-19. What is environmental racism? So these have the, they have some social justice issues, women issues, gays and lesbians issues, racism issues, and then they have this, you know, all these good things wrapped around this evil idea, right? Of globalization, capitalism, take human out of human, the humanness out of human beings, right? To, uh, to bring everyone on one milla, one civilization, to bring the whole world on one deen, one system, okay? And if you're if you don't like that system, then you know you're not going to have a good social score with 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 the nudge. Again, this is about changing human behavior, modifying human behavior. Nudge, improving decisions about health, wealth, and happiness. You need a small nudge. Go ahead, we'll give you a small nudge, right? That's what you need. Okay. Now over here, I wanted to share with you that what is you know the Quran talked about this. They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths, with these forums, with these discussions, with these plans, with their mouths, with the media, with the TV, with the internet, all of this. They want to extinguish the light of Allah. Okay? To, to take the lightness, the light away and put you in darkness. Right? And, Wallahu mutimun nurihi, but Allah will fulfill His light, will complete His light. Wallahu kariha al kafirun, no matter how much the kafirun dislike this, it's going to happen. This next ayah is very important. So the nine of so the Saf, if you read most of the tafasir, they say this is about the time of the coming of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Close to that time, Allah says, Huwa alladhi, Allah sent His Rasul. His Rasul, Allah sent His Rasul with two things, bil huda, the guidance, the Quran. And that true deen, that true system, the, the true system of social justice, economic, judicial order, the system of justice. He is Allah who sent his messenger with Al Huda, the Quran, and Deen Al Haq, Liudhirahu Alad Dini Kulli, to make it supreme, dominated, manifested over what? The Dhulm and the darkness of Deen. The one system that will be, because Allah, there will be only one deen at that time. Okay, that will be this global deen, this global system that will take over the world. It didn't say in the plural adyan. It didn't say, huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al haq li yudhirahu alad adyani kulli. No. Or it says, huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al haq li yudhirahu alad deen kulli. To make it supreme over all the deen, all of the system. That one deen that will be global in extent at that time, meaning the time we're about to enter. And it will be a system of shirk. It will be a system based upon shirk. Inna shirk la dhulm And shirk is based upon dhulm, oppression and darkness and the taking the human fitra into darkness. It will be no matter how much the people of shirk, they dislike this. Okay. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says what? And talking about that age. The Jews will not be happy with you. Nor the Christians. This is the Jews and Christians that come together to form a new economic world empire. Again in singular. Okay. Hatta until they will not be happy until until you surrender to them you give up to them that will be the challenge of tomorrow. Hatta tatabi'a millatahum until you follow their way their millah their civilization 
قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى But your response to should them to be, no, the guidance, the right way, the light is with the light of Allah, Allah's light. light. لَنَا إِتَّبَعْتَ أَحْوَاءَهُمْ If you follow their conjectures and their desires and their what they want you to, بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ After the knowledge has come to you, مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَلِيٌّ وَلَا نَصِيرٌ Then you have, Allah will not be your wali, He will be your friend. وَلَا نَصِيرٌ And He's not going to help you. If you give in to this world domination, the system, no, you have to live in protest. You have to live in protest to that system. Now, let me end by saying this, that what can, what is the Islamic response? Number one, you must become, because internet might be gone, YouTube might be gone. We won't have, there's not a lot of time. You know, I think, uh, you know, we have maybe 10 years or so before things really get to a point where we won't even be in touch with each other. Okay, Allahu A'lam, it could be before, it could be after, I mean, I don't know, it's a guess, it's a human guess, could be completely right, and if Allah willed, could be right, but the point is, we don't have that much time, you have to learn that much Arabic language that you can understand the Quran, so this is why I'm saying you have to do this, why? Because the Prophet told us the way out of fitna, when Ali radiallahu anh was told by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fitnatun, soon there will be fitna. He said, مَا مَخْرُجُهُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ What is the way out of that? قَالَ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ The Book of Allah. That's why Surah Al-Kahf, the surah about the Jal starts with أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَى عَبْدِهِ الْكِتَابِ أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ For the one who sent on his servant the book. Because you will say, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ We have the Qur'an. Allah showed us and told us what to do. So, I'm going to be teaching the Arabic language and teaching it through Surah Al-Kahf. So we'll be studying Surah Al-Kahf and the Arabic language together. And if you're interested, go to the Mahdi Institute. I'll have uh, the link down there and sign up for the Arabic class if you're interested. If not, then the second thing, you have to be with the Jama'ah. You have to be with the Jama'ah. You have to have an Amir. You have to be with the Jama'ah because you will not be able to withstand the pressures of society if you're alone. You will not be with, able to withstand unless you have a group of people willing to to make the sacrifices needed to be together. Now, once you're in the form of a jama'ah, you have to learn to live off the grid. And maybe if Allah gives you the opportunity, you will come back to the cities and establish Islam in the cities. Because as these nation states fall, as these currencies fall, as everything goes downhill, and then, you know, there's going to be uh, great wars in trying to bring about a new system, a new order that uh, we can talk uh, more about later on. But we have to get ready. There's no time to waste. There's no time to waste. This is about saving Islam. Okay. This is about saving the deen. This is about saving the seeds. This is about saving our children and the Islam for our children. And to do that, you have to know Arabic language. For that, you have to be in a jama'ah. For that, you have to work to restore a the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a response to this darkness so people can see, oh, this is justice. Okay, so I will end here, inshallah ta'ala. And we will continue. Like I said, these are no longer connecting the dots. These things are happening. We can keep our eyes closed and think that these things are not happening. These things are happening. And 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 the rest, you know, everybody follows uh, the orders we're given for the masks and for our prayers and for our hajj. Everybody follows like a mob. But you got to wake up and understand that, you know, non-Muslims understand what's going on better than the Muslims do. But this, what I've showed you today, this is this is happening. This is not about connecting the dots. This is this is what has already. This is the discussions already taken place. So I'll end here. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Inshallah, I want to share with you uh, a few gifts. I want to share with you some of my teachers and tell you about some of my teachers and. Uh, also show you uh, like an encouragement to become part of this Arabic program and to learn about what I expect from my students. This is what I expect. Okay, so let me just uh, share with you. This is our teacher, Dr. Abdul Sami. 
Okay, Dr. Abdul Sami was Noman Ali Khan's first Arabic teacher. He was the teacher, the first teacher who tested Noman. What is the noun? What is the fa'il? What is the verb? What is the harf? What is sifa malsuf? The first person to help Noman break down the first few verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. This is the teacher. His name is Dr. Abdul Sami. He is a student of Dr. Isra Ahmed. He is my teacher as well as Noman Ali Khan's teacher. And you know, after he took these classes. Then, you know, Noman was also then, you know, learning from us and others uh, at that time. Okay, so this is Dr. Basami. He's speaking in Urdu language, so the point is not that. This is a man of great taqwa. A man of great taqwa, this man. Okay, so I want you to just, you know, to listen to him for about 10 seconds, even if he's speaking another language. But this is the man who has produced many great scholars or people that are very uh, that have good understanding of Quran this man has produced many people like that mashallah without a person behind is bound to go to the disorder wo orderly movement nahi ho sakta phir wo young aadmiyon ko phir nahi samajh aayega wo chaat yaad hai na aapko yani wo khatoon jo hai wo chaat ko jab ek khaas tarike se so this is Dr. Abdul Sami. So the encouragement here is you learn with the good teachers. They'll teach you the Arabic language and then you may become, you know, the next uh, whoever, right? You might, may become the next Sheikh Imran Hussain. You may become the next Hamza Yusuf. It, it doesn't matter. But if you, like Noman Ali Khan, dedicate yourself to the cause. Now, uh, I want to now share with you. Which we shall inshallah discuss tomorrow. This is Islamic State. This is Dr. Asar Ahmed, the Sheikh that you can say I studied with since I was 13 years old. And he passed away when I was like maybe 35, 36 years old. And, uh, you know, uh, there's much to say about this, but this is the Sheikh. Uh, <coughs> What's the condition? In one eye, one condition, if it is fulfilled, the state becomes Islamic. Number two, basis of the cultural homogeneity and continuity of Islamic society. Law and constitution is one aspect of the human society. Culture, civilization, norms, values. What are the steps and what's the basis? Of cultural homogeneity, a very big kumma, more than a million, spread over half of the globe. But there should be homogeneity of culture. And this culture shouldn't change from time to time. Conti so, this is Dr. Isra Ahmed, radiallahu anh, the Mufassir, the person who created the, probably the largest movement to call people back to the Quran, bring the Ummah back to the Quran, which was one of the reasons that Sheikh, even Sheikh Imran Hussain gave his bayah, gave his allegiance to this Sheikh, Dr. Isra Ahmed, uh, at one time. And uh, so the point being here is that there is a very rich, you know, uh, so Dr. Abdul Sami, I showed you, who taught no Ali Khan, he was my teacher, this was also my, Sheikh, uh, Dr. Isra Ahmed was also my teacher, and uh, so there is a rich culture here in, in this tradition. And it's not limited to this, okay? So let me just share with you uh, something that, you know, this man that you're looking at, right? Uh, just listen to him for another 10 seconds and I'll tell you something about this man. Continuity, homogeneity and continuity of culture. On what basis? Number three, important and fundamental do's and don'ts for keeping the ummah or the Islamic State integrated Strong. Number four, position of racial and ethnic groupings in Islam. And with it, another question. What is the relationship between a Muslim society, Islamic State, and the rest of the humanity? What are the basis of interest? So, let me show you what Noman Ali Khan says about this Dr. Isra Ahmed radiallahu anh. I will tell you about uh, Dr. Sarkman and I'll conclude inshallah. This is um, one of his lost treasures. The lost I, I held that for last. 
he said that there are two views of looking at Islam. One view is you look at Islam and you say, what does it do for me? What does it do for me? What, what is halal for me? What can I enjoy? What more can I do? You make more and more things permissible on yourself. You ask, what more luxuries can I take part in in this life? And there's another view of Islam, which is, what more can I do for it? What more can I do for it? So one view is, Islam is in service to me. And the other view is, I am in service to Islam. And he said that the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu ajma'in, were predominant, if you study what they did, and the kinds of questions they asked to the Messenger, وسلم, what more can I do? How do I get to Jannah? Tell me the most amazing thing I can do, the most beloved thing to Allah that I can do. In other words, they weren't asking how much, how much less can I get away with. They were asking, what more can I do? And if you look at the questions of the Muslims today, when they go to the ulama, what do they ask? Do they ask, what more can I do for Allah? Or do they ask, what more dunya can Islam give me? Essentially, is this halal? Can I eat that too? Can I go there too? Can I buy this too? Can I get in this business also? Can I wear that? Can I... You understand? The mentality has become, I want to be served by the religion and feel good about myself and not have to feel guilty, rather than me serving myself to Islam. And in this, he had a very, I would have to say extreme opinion, but I have to, in the end, I have to be jealous of him. I, I have to be jealous of him. When he, because having... This is not extreme opinion. This is the opinion of the Sahaba. This is the opinion that is mentioned in Quran. But, you know, this is what we were taught by our Shaykh. And then, you know, somebody can, as they get more knowledge or understanding, they can change their opinion. But this is what Isra Ahmed taught. Having that extreme opinion, I, I don't know of anybody who can have that nowadays. I, I don't know. You know what his extreme opinion was? He said, until the deen of Islam needs help. He said, look around you and answer, ask yourself the question, does the deen of Islam need help? And I, I don't think any Muslim would look around and say, no, the deen needs no help at all. I think all of us know very well, we are living in times where the deen needs help. He says, until the answer is yes, the deen of Islam needs help, he said, you shouldn't enjoy your food. You shouldn't buy new clothes. You shouldn't get, a, get an extra car or buy a house or expand your property. Give, live to the bare minimum and give everything else to help Allah's deen until that is done, until Allah is happy that the deen is established, you shouldn't be happy. That was his opinion. And you know, having that opinion is one thing. Living by it is something else. He would come to the United States. You know, scholars come from abroad, we put them up in hotels. Even I go and you know, uh, at a conference and they'll book me a hotel room and this and that. The guy doesn't stay at a hotel. He's sleeping on the floor in the masjid. He's sleeping at somebody's house on the floor. You know? And he's eating like simple meals. I'm a witness to this because he used to come to our house to stay often. Uh, you know, my dad was very close to him. And uh, anyway, continue. And he's dressing in the same clothes. He's got two pairs of clothes. One's in the wash and the other he's wearing. That's what he's wearing for two months. Three months in a stretch. Subhanallah. It is one thing to say, I'm not going to enjoy life. I'm going to give everything to it. It's one thing to say that. But it's another to do that. Even go visit his institute in, in Lahore, which I never had the fortune of visiting, but my, my friends and colleagues did. How is he living? How, what kind of life is he living? Subhanallah. It's a remarkable thing to have people that not only say that, but put literally what they say, put your money where your mouth is. You know? And he would... And that's the type of person we lost when we lost him. So, Dr. Abdul Sami is one of those people who's given up his life, who gave up his life for the deen. Okay? Now, let me share with you. This is Dr. Irfan Khan, one of my Quran teachers I benefited from for, I think, almost two years. Uh, so, I'm just mentioning this because this, this, is, this is the type of, you need to get knowledge, you need dedication. Okay? So, let's listen to this for about, so this, uh, Sheikh Dr. Irfan Khan, may Allah forgive him. May Allah increase his ranks, Dr. Sir Ahmed's ranks. These are two of my sheikhs that have passed away. Shura, Shura, and Zuhruf, and all these 
Chinese were murdered. And then in, in 47, in 47, the Azam comes. That is, Allah said, I'm going to take action. So Allah takes action. And Allah uses the uh, for taking action, Allah uses the hands of the Muslims to, to take their activities. And now it becomes a test for the believers themselves. Allah tests whether they are sincere, whether they are not sincere, and when Allah tells them to be tough, are they ready to be tough or not? This thing goes on. So now, what is the point of this? The point of this is there's Quranic studies and there's eschatolo eschatological studies. Whether you agree with Sheikh Imran Hussain or you disagree with him. But he is the one who made this a formal subject. Okay? So we are going to embark on a journey of the first, you can say, uh, line of knowledge of the Quran. And then we're going to take from Islamic eschatology and from the methodology uh, given by Sheikh Imran Hussain and even sometimes from others and bring it with the Quran into Sutul Kahf and understand it and see what is the picture that comes out. We're going to understand this, you know, these, the, this Mawlana Farahis, Mawlana Islahi uh, also, how they also relate to all of this paradigm. Okay, so I just wanted to introduce you to some of the shayukh that, you know, Alhamdulillah, nowadays, as you know, I'm also benefiting from Dr. Umar Zaid. So that adds to this. And then uh, I'm also benefiting from other shayukh, um, which I will talk about later. But uh, the point being that when I want my students to be, that, who, if you come into this class, you're not coming in, you're coming in to dedicate yourself for Islam. Right? This doesn't mean that you don't have family life, you don't have a job and everything. But this means that you're on your feet, but working for Islam. You're on your feet, and you 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 have the upper hand, you have the giving hand, but you're also working for Islam, and you're also getting ready, getting ready. As you know, I I I don't know if I said this, but uh, there will in the description in the comment you'll see the Mahdi Institute where you can go and enroll. Otherwise, I'll leave my email if that doesn't work. Okay, so may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you. May you promote this. May you share this with others. Ask them to enroll, and let's make this into a real Mahdi Institute and really do the work that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy with us. This will be sadaqatul jariya for my teachers. This will be sadaqa for me. It will be sadaqa for you. And inshallah, this way, if Allah accepts us, Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samina alim. If Allah accepts from us, then you know, then we have nothing to worry about. Jazakumullah khairan. Now, uh, just a few words. Inshallah, so let me leave it here, inshallah. Um, I hope a lot of you register, uh, and then we'll just take it from there. And please spread this message and let people know that I will be doing this. And this will be a great time for the people who don't understand uh, Islamic eschatology, who you want to teach them, but this is a good time where they're learning Quranic Arabic, but they're also learning Islamic eschatology at the same time. Okay, so please spread this message. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Eid Mubarak to everyone. I did want to say one thing, inshallah, that is that you have to know at least that much Arabic where you can read Arabic. If you cannot read the Quran, then this class is not for you. At least where you are on, for, for this class, the prerequisite is you can pick up any part of the Quran and read it in its Arabic. It doesn't have to be perfect tajweed, but as long as you can read it, then you can learn the Arabic language. Okay, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.